Are you a fellow extreme Potterhead? Are you a collector of wizarding props? Or do you just enjoy learning all of the fun facts and behind the scenes magic involved in creating the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts films? If you answered no to all of those questions, you are very welcome to skip this video, but no worries, I shall see you anon. But if you answered yes to any of the questions above, you may want to stick around as I review and compare nearly all of the English language Wizarding World film companion books that I could find. Indeed, I have meticulously collected and looked through all of these books relating to the Wizarding World, nearly all of which I bought secondhand. And would love to share what I think is worth getting depending on your specific level of interest and budget. And stay tuned until the end, where I unbox the newest book to hit the Wizarding World, The Magic of Mina Lima. Now these are not any of the actual stories or screenplays, these are just the reference or companion books for the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts films. Now there are absolutely more books than these out there, this is not an exhaustive list but it still will be fairly comprehensive, so one's ready. I have put a table of contents in the description, so you can skip around to whichever books or sets you're most interested in. I am also including comparisons of a few books where an updated edition has been published, so you can get a sense of exactly what has been changed or added in those newer editions. If you would like to see a complete flip through of any of these books without my commentary, I will also be uploading an ultimate flip through shortly after this. Link in the description. So here we go, in no particular order. Let's start with Grandest Home, shall we? Lovely. Page to Screen by Bob McCabe is a chunky monker. It was published in 2011 by Insight Editions, who would also publish most of the books I'll discuss today. It came out first on its own, then again the following year as part of a limited edition set, which I'll get to. Page to Screen is definitely the most comprehensive single volume companion book detailing the creation of the Harry Potter films. It's broken down into two main parts, the making of the films, from the initial optioning of the book and casting through each individual film, and the art of the films, with sections covering the characters, locations, creatures, and artifacts. Essentially, if you only want to buy one book about the Harry Potter films, covering as much as possible, this is the one to get, particularly if your main interest is getting a behind-the-scenes look at the general filmmaking process. If you are interested in specific departments, such as the props, costumes, etc., this book does include a good amount of information and many wonderful illustrations and the art portion of the book, but in a more concise format than other books. I think this book was the jumping off point to many books that came later, expanding each of those individual departments. I'll give you some comparisons later on to show you exactly what I mean. This copy is actually the one from the limited edition set. The content is exactly the same, but the copy sold individually is bound in a printed blue vinyl laminate covering, whereas the one from the set is in a blue cloth, just a little more nicely bound. Now, in 2018, they released an updated edition, featuring the filming of the near-death, blindingly white King's Cross station, is this all real or is this just happening inside my head scene between Harry and Dumbledore on the front board. This version has everything the first one had, plus a new section discussing the legacy of Harry Potter with regards to the Wizarding World theme parks, the Warner Brothers studio tour, and the House of Mina Lima, the gallery of the graphic design team in London. It's an extra eight pages of content. The rest is exactly the same. As I mentioned, the original version of Page to Screen without the Legacy Editions was also released as part of a limited edition set by Insight Editions in 2012, called Page to Screen – The Complete Filmmaking Journey. In addition to the cloth-bound Page to Screen book, this set features seven additional books, a set of five exclusive prints, and a stunning replica of the Monster Book of Monsters. Plus, the whole thing is housed in a decorative, cloth-covered shelf case. Now, this set was limited to just 3,000 copies worldwide, which means, unfortunately, the only way to acquire one is by paying a very large sum of money on the secondhand market. I was a little crazy when I bought mine. So the big question for the set is probably, is it worth it? Well, it depends, right? It absolutely depends on what you want out of buying these kinds of books. But if you're a really big fan, I mean, quite possibly. My biggest reason for wanting this set was from the perspective of a collector. Not just a collector of Harry Potter books, but as a collector of artifacts, and in particular, prop replicas. 
There are just so many photos of the props and graphic designs in these books, a lot of which have trickled into subsequent publications, but this set is still quite special. Let's have a further look. The additional books in the set are The Creature Shop Compendium, Flora and Fauna from the Harry Potter films. This is a predominantly visual look at creatures and plant life, packed with concept art but fairly light on text. It's bound in a beautiful decorated green leatherette binding with gilt lettering. Environments envisioned, building fantastic sets and scouting dramatic locations. This is another heavily visual book with many large and detailed illustrations of concept art as well as photos of various sets, showing all sorts of details easily missed in the films. A Guide to the Graphic Arts Department Posters, Prints, and Publications from the Harry Potter Films This is the holy grail for fans of Mina Lima and collectors and creators of prop replicas. It's literally a dictionary of the graphic art in the Harry Potter films, alphabetized and everything. I'll bet half the things in this book are barely even seen on screen, if at all. My favorite detail is the end papers and interior pages of some of the prop books. Movie Magic, Practical Props and Exciting Effects This is a great mixture, still predominantly visual, but with a bit more text than the first few. Remember, these books are all companions to the page to screen book, so I'm guessing they put most of the text in that. This book covers visual effects sequences such as the Tale of the Three Brothers sequence, Wizard's Chess, and the Weasley's Fireworks, practical effects such as Aunt Marge blowing up and the decadent food displays, and the design process of many props, including an entire section on Weasley's Wizard Wheezes products. The Paintings of Hogwarts, Masterpieces from the School of Witchcraft and Wizardry Sets. That's right, there's an entire book dedicated solely to the paintings of Hogwarts, with detailed images of all of the sleeping headmasters and even breakdowns of how many of the moving portraits were created. Ten years later, life on set with the Harry Potter cast and crew. This is a sort of scrapbook of the cast and crew throughout all eight films. And finally, Wizard Wear and Muggle Attire, costuming the world of Harry Potter. This one's the holy grail for magical cosplayers, with detailed drawings, photos, and close-ups of fabric swatches for all of the main and even most of the minor characters, including the concept art for the sadly dropped character of Peeves. It's just insane how much is in this set of books. Again, the seven companion books are predominantly visual to accompany page to screen. Portions of these books were certainly pulled through to future books which were mass produced and therefore vastly more affordable and obtainable. But this really is a stunning set for those really wanting a detailed dive into every creative aspect of these films. Not to mention this. This is by far the best official replica of the Monster Book of Monsters on the market down to the weirdly sticky tentacles. Now, this is available outside this set in a limited capacity, but I'll get to that later. Overall, this set is absolutely fantastic, but let's say you just don't have the budget for one of these. I completely understand. There is still an awful lot you can get your hands on for just a fraction of the cost of this set. A great starting point for a more affordable and concise set is the four volume vault series. We've got the artifact vault, the character vault, the creature vault, and magical places from the films Hogwarts, Diagon Alley, and beyond. I know it's not a vault, but it goes with this set. Once again, these were published by Insight Editions, coming out individually between 2014 and 2016. The first of these books to come out was The Creature Vault. This is, as the title suggests, all about the magical creatures of the wizarding world, and also plant life. Now, comparing this to the Creature Shop Compendium from the Page to Screen set, and the Creature section in Page to Screen itself, I do actually think this is a better book than either of them, and even better than both combined. The Creature Shop Compendium is predominantly concept art with little text, but of course it was a companion to Page to Screen, which contained the descriptive text and additional illustrations such as screenshots from the film and behind-the-scenes photos. 
However, The Creature Vault was published as a standalone book, so it has all of the above. It also simply covers way more creatures and plants. Page to Screen covers 17, and The Creature Shop Compendium covers 21, whereas The Creature Vault covers 39. Now, all of that said, if creatures are your thing, The Creature Shop Compendium from the limited edition set is still useful, as I went through both books and found that quite a lot of the concept art used in that book wasn't included in The Creature Vault. Some of it was, but quite a lot wasn't, so both are actually still of value as far as unique content. Before I move on from the Creature Vault, I also want to note that this is also available as a specially bound brown leatherette edition accompanying the official Monster Book of Monsters replica. Yep, that same one used in the page to screen limited edition set. If you want to search for it, it will be listed as the Monster Book of Monsters replica from Insight Collectibles. But like I said, it does also include this special edition of the Creature Vault. The book itself is exactly the same internally as the one I have here, it's just in a nicer binding. Now, as of this video, the Monster Book of Monsters replica with the Creature Vault is still available new, although it is another pricey one. Second in this little set, we've got the Character Vault. Another self-explanatory one, this is centered around the characters and includes details on the costumes, props, makeup, and special effects pertaining to each character. Like the Creature Vault, this is a well-made standalone compendium of elements from the Page to Screen set, in particular the character section of Page to Screen, and the companion book Wizard Wear and Muggle Attire. Having done a comparison between the three, again, this book is pretty darn comprehensive to suit most Potterheads. But if you're really keen on having every little detail, the page to screen set does have just a bit more to it. The actual book page to screen simply covers more of the minor characters. That said, for the characters that are covered in the character vault, there is a bit more given for each character. Plucking one out at random, Ginny Weasley is given one page in page to screen and four pages in the character vault. However, Wizard Wear and Muggle Attire does have not only more characters, but more costuming drawings and details than is featured in the character vault, so this is still the one to have for costuming. Next, Magical Places from the Films, Hogwarts, Diagon Alley, and beyond. This is, of course, all about the locations, including lots of detailed photos of sets and the props decorating the sets. The comparisons here will be to the Locations section of Page to Screen and the companion book Environments Envisioned. What I've said about the last two vaults in comparing them to the Page to Screen set is essentially true here as well. This is a great comprehensive volume covering dozens of sets, but the Page to Screen books are equally valuable. In this case, I think all three are even more equally matched than in previous cases, because each has its own strengths and each has a lot of different material. Page to screen, just to start, has this incredible two-page spread of the Hogwarts miniature blueprint. Page to screen also, once again, covers more locations by sheer numbers, but most are only given one or two pages of coverage. Magical Places gives a bit more coverage to what it does cover. Environments Envisioned is actually the weakest in terms of size. It is the smallest book and has the least number of sets covered. However, it more than makes up for that with the actual images provided, so the pages are packed with detailed photos. In this case, all three are really strong books to have in one's collection. I can't possibly choose one over the other. Let me give you an example of why. Let's look at Dumbledore's office in each book. In the location section of Page to Screen, we only get a two-page spread with a set photo, concept art, two small blueprint drawings, and a paragraph of text. But, with the large size of the book, the photo we're given is really lovely. In Environments Envisioned, we get four pages featuring ten set and detail photos and a concept art, all different from those in page to screen. And in Magical Places, we get three pages, the first two of which include six photos, none of which were in the other books. The third page features a concept drawing and two of the photos in environments envisioned, but all are larger and not as cropped, so more of the set is visible. All three are great. The last one in this set is the Artifact Vault. Now, since I'm a prop enthusiast, this was one of the first books I bought, and it still remains one of my favorites. It's got fantastic photos and information about not only the main hero props we all know, but even more obscure props, those you barely see among the set decoration, or even some made for scenes that were cut altogether. This one pulls from the artifacts section of Page to Screen, a guide to the graphic arts department, movie magic, and even shows off some of the paintings in Hogwarts. 
Again, and I hate to keep saying it because I'm aware of the difficulty and expense involved, the page-to-screen limited edition set is still more comprehensive in its coverage. However, I highly recommend the Artifact Vault for any prop collector. These four books really are a great place to start learning about the Harry Potter films in a much more affordable way. A bonus is they each include a folding print at the back of the book and an additional magical booklet bound in the center of the book. Alternately, there's the 12 volume Film Vault collection. These are also published by Insight Editions, but instead of being broken down by film department, they're broken down into much narrower story-based categories. If you're after something really specific, these are great, as they are available individually, or you can also buy them as a complete box set. When the 12 volumes are together, the spines do create a beautiful gilt image of the Hogwarts crest. The individual books are Volume 1, Forest, Lake, and Sky Creatures. Volume 2, Diagon Alley, The Hogwarts Express, and The Ministry. Volume 3, Horcruxes and the Deathly Hollows. Volume 4, Hogwarts Students. Volume 5, Creature Companions, Plants, and Shapeshifters. Volume 6, Hogwarts Castle. Volume 7, Quidditch and the Triwizard Tournament. Volume 8, The Order of the Phoenix and Dark Forces. Volume 9, Goblins, House Elves, and Dark Creatures. Volume 10, Wizarding Homes and Villages. Volume 11, Hogwarts Professors and Staff. And Volume 12, Celebrations, Food, and the Publications of the Wizarding World. Now Insight definitely pulled some of the same content from the page to screen set for this set, but they're still not nearly as comprehensive. I also have to admit that while there is a lot of interesting information in the text, I also spotted many, many typos in the text, which just bothers me. It seems like this set was a little more thrown together and not given quite as much attention. Quite a lot of the text was taken verbatim from other publications as well, such as the Vault series previously mentioned. That said, one plus to this set is that each volume includes a print inside the back cover. Now again, if you want to buy these secondhand rather than new, keep in mind that the print is something likely to be lost. Next up, the Wand Collection and the Broom Collection. Content-wise, fantastic. Fitting on my bookshelves, not so much. In fairness, I do actually like the landscape format of these books, but unfortunately they are a little awkward on the shelf. But that said, if you're a wand collector, then The Wand Collection, published in 2017 by Titan Books by arrangement with Inside Editions, is definitely a must-have. Some other books do discuss particular character wands, but this is quite a lot of them. 60, in fact, in one volume with large photographs on one side and short blurbs with details of the wand and fun facts about its design where applicable on the other. It also includes some introductory pages discussing wand lore and the filmmakers who helped bring them to life. Now, this book only includes wands in the Harry Potter films. I would not be surprised at all if they release another wand volume to cover the Fantastic Beasts films. There are, however, some special editions of the wand collection out there as well. First up, there's the wand collection gift set, although currently sold out on Inside Edition's website. This includes a soft cover copy of the book and a scale model of the Elder Wand. The most exciting edition, though, is the collector's edition. This includes a hardback copy of the book as well as a second book, The Art of Wand Work, a poster detailing wand movements and technique, and a scale model of the Elder Wand, all housed in a deluxe gold foil stamped case. The Art of Wand Workbook adds an additional 48 pages of information detailing the original developments of the wand for the films, the evolution of wand work, and the anatomy of a wand battle. It discusses how the wands changed between Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner of Azkaban, and includes wand blueprints, concept art, and storyboards for the wand battles. As of the making of this video, the collector's edition is still available on Inside Edition's website, but it is a bit costly. The extra cost for me really hinged on the value of the additional book, but I looked through the contents of the second book and didn't find it was worth it for me personally. But in the meantime, Bloomsbury Children's Books, still by arrangement with Insight Editions, did release the Broom Collection in 2020. The full title is actually The Broom Collection and Other Artifacts from the Wizarding World, because this doesn't only include broomsticks. It also includes bits about flying scenes in the films, and really, 
everything Quidditch. From the balls and equipment, to the costumes, to the professional team designs, and the Quidditch World Cup, to the trophies at Hogwarts, and even the Snitch Snatcher board game from a deleted scene in Prisoner of Azkaban. It's a very cool book. It also includes a section at the back with blueprint drawings and behind the scenes information about the design of various broomsticks. And being released in 2020, this book does include the two styles of brooms seen in Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald as well. The last thing I want to mention about these two books is a really cool feature at the back, which is the index. These aren't ordinary indices, they are pictorial indices. So let's say you see a wand somewhere and can't place whose it is. Rather than having to flip through the entire book, you can quickly look in the back of the book and visually identify that wand. Same with the brooms in the other book. This next book is definitely a fan favorite for a few different reasons. Film Wizardry, yet another Inside Editions book, came out in 2010. It was actually designed by Mina Lima, the graphic design team behind all of the Wizarding World films. Not only is it beautifully laid out in a scrapbook sort of style, but it's a very popular choice because of all the extra surprises included. This book is filled with paper replicas, some attached to the pages and others you can take out of pockets and use to display in your collection. Now for the ones attached to pages, Danny at Wizardry Workshop has made a great tutorial video for removing these cleanly so you can also display them if you wish. I'll put a link to his video and channel in my description. His channel is fantastic by the way. Now my copy here is the US edition. In the UK, the covers are blue instead of red, but otherwise the content is the same in these original editions. The downside to this book is it came out in 2010, before the final film was released. Therefore, it only contains a short sneak peek of Deathly Hallows Part 2. As a result, a revised and expanded edition came out in 2012, including new material covering Deathly Hallows Part 2, along with a new removable photo album. Then, a third, updated edition came out in 2018. This edition includes eight additional pages about the Deathly Hallows films, and includes a large blueprint of the layout of Hogwarts and a Ministry of Magic poster. However, I did notice that this edition removed the Yule Ball program and the Ministry of Magic ID prop replicas. One thing to note buying these on the secondhand market, the ISBN number did not get updated between them, so you have to be very careful that you're ordering the correct edition. Regardless of the edition, this is definitely one of my top favorite Harry Potter film companion books. So diving more into specific books about Fantastic Beasts, these next two are essentially the page-to-screen equivalents for the first and second Fantastic Beasts films. They are Inside the Magic, The Making of Fantastic Beasts, and Lights, Camera, Magic, The Making of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. These are the definitive companion books for the films geared toward older readers, so they're very informative and filled with great photographs. They discuss how the films came to be, the characters and their casting, the creatures, the props, and many different departments within the filmmaking process. They're just great script-to-screen, behind-the-scenes books, with interviews from many key crew members. I haven't yet seen one of these for The Secrets of Dumbledore, but if they do release one or volumes for any of the subsequent films, I'll add them to the description here and do an update video. So we've seen the film wizardry book for the Harry Potter films, which I've said is one of my favorites. Mina Lima has also designed, so far, film wizardry books for the first two Fantastic Beasts films. And just like the Harry Potter one, these are my two favorite Fantastic Beasts ones out there. The Case of Beasts is all about the first film, and The Archive of Magic is about the second film, The Crimes of Grindelwald. These books were published by HarperCollins, and are again in a sort of scrapbook style, with plenty of paper replicas throughout. The binding of these, however, is even more stunning than the Harry Potter film wizardry books. The Case of Beasts is designed to look like Newt's suitcase, not just on the outside, but on the inside as well, with the end papers being the internal pattern of the suitcase. And the Archive of Magic is designed to look like one of the boxes in the records room of the French Ministry of Magic. The paper replicas are also arguably even better than the Harry Potter version. They're generally all full-size replicas, some with added gold foiling and holographic photos, and the books even contain full-size posters. 
The Case of Beasts includes four full-sized folded posters, Newt and Tina's Wanted posters, Newt's Mapamundi, and Makuza's Spell Contraventions map. And the Archive of Magic includes two Circus Arcanus posters. The fold marks on these are unfortunate, but understandable, but they make up for it by printing on the backs as well. Leave it to Mina Lima to do things really well. If you love Fantastic Beasts, particularly if you're a prop collector like me, you will 100% want these two books above many of the others covered in this video. Now, starting in 2016, Insight Editions came out with a new series called J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World Similar Magic. to the film wizardry books, these are designed in a scrapbook style with interactive elements. However, the pages are a little more spaced out, a little less packed onto each page. And rather than all the extra bits being almost entirely paper prop replicas, there are some miniature paper prop replicas, plus a variety of other interactive elements, including pop-ups, stickers, and more. Each volume also comes with a print inside the back cover. These books are designed to merge the entire Wizarding World to date, covering both Fantastic Beasts and Harry Potter. The first three volumes cover the first Fantastic Beasts film alongside the Harry Potter films. Volume 1 covers extraordinary people and fascinating places, Volume 2, Curious Creatures, and Volume 3, Amazing Artifacts. Then, as the subsequent Fantastic Beasts films have come out, new additions have been added. So far, there are standalone volumes on The Crimes of Grindelwald and The Secrets of Dumbledore. Overall, from my particular taste, I still prefer the film wizardry books over the movie magic set, but it's still a fun set to have. And in fairness, this is the only set currently with a book on The Secrets of Dumbledore, so that one is worth getting at least. This set might be better as well for a younger age group. Inside Editions, through various publishers, also came out with many of these movie scrapbooks, which are essentially smaller, shorter versions of the movie magic books, but on narrower subjects. Again, they're laid out in a scrapbook style with some interactive elements, including stickers and many miniature prop replicas. But these are probably more suited to a younger or more casual fan. They're a smaller format with plenty of interesting information and images, but if you have any of the sets previously mentioned, they may be a bit superfluous to your collection. The movie scrapbooks currently published as of the making of this video, as far as I'm aware, are Hogwarts, Hogwarts at Christmas, Diagon Alley, Spells and Charms, The Dark Arts, and Newt Scamander. Ah, the art books. These are quite comprehensive, largely visual reference books with little text aside from captions. The art of Harry Potter is another chunky monkey, only slightly smaller than the page to screen book. Inside you will find very few actual screenshots from the films. This is almost entirely a book of concept art and artistic renderings. From scene concepts to storyboard art, to sets to costume and creature design, to quite a large section at the back of prop design. There will be overlap with other books, but if you're interested in the artwork, this is the single volume you'll want to have, at least on the Harry Potter films. For the Fantastic Beasts films, they have so far released individual art books covering the first two films. These two are thinner books, only covering a single film each, but together they are about the width of the art of Harry Potter, so they are very comprehensive in their coverage of their respective films. They are also slightly more landscape formatted, whereas The Art of Harry Potter was a large portrait formatted book. There are also some fun features inside the rear covers. Next are The Art of Harry Potter mini books of graphic design, creatures, and magical places. These are quite thick books, but very small about three and three quarter inches by three inches, or approximately nine and a half by seven and a half centimeters. They are absolutely full of illustrations, but generally these images can be found in the page to screen, vault, and film vault books on the corresponding topics. However, if you would like pocketbook versions to carry around with you, these are nice sturdy items to have. The graphic design book also includes a few pages about the House of Mina Lima Gallery in London. There are several of these cinematic guides out there for both Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts. They are the approximate dimensions of a standard hardback novel, and roughly 65 pages each. 
you can get a box set of most of the Harry Potter ones, with a book each focused on Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, and Albus Dumbledore. I believe there is also a Hogwarts cinematic guide, but honestly, I didn't feel the need to purchase all of these. In all honesty, I don't think these books are particularly worthwhile to anyone. They're filled with some nice large screenshots from the film, but nothing really unique, and there is very little text scattered throughout, sometimes quotes from the films. Even for kids, I think there are other books that would be much more exciting and worthwhile. These magical movie handbooks came out for the first two Fantastic Beasts films in both hardback and paperback. They are a slightly larger format than the cinematic guides, but similar kinds of books with large screenshots from the films and minimal text. Although these do have some nice photos of props as well, and perhaps have a little bit more to them. That said, if you are picking up any of the more substantial Fantastic Beasts films I've already talked about, these are probably superfluous as well. That said, they do have a few fun features. There are pages in each explaining lists of spells used in the films, as well as a brief art gallery at the back. The Crimes of Grindelwald gallery is a little more interesting in my opinion. This one's a bit of a hidden gem in my eyes. Movie Making News, the stories behind the magic. Published by HarperCollins in 2018, this is a behind the scenes look at the first Fantastic Beasts film, but in a completely different format to what we've seen so far. This book has some color pages at the back, giving a preview of the Grimes of Grindelwald, but otherwise is entirely designed to look like pages of a newspaper. The pages even feel akin to a newspaper. Now, these aren't replicas of the newspaper props in the films, they are still behind the scenes information, but it's just a fun presentation. There is also a fun lenticular image of Frank the Thunderbird on the front cover. This is a 28-page book with thick card pages. It has a similar appearance to the movie magic books, but the text is very basic, giving brief descriptions based around the story rather than any behind-the-scenes information. That said, there are some really nice direct shots of lesser-seen props from the Crimes of Grindelwald. Those, for me, do make the book worth having, although quite a few of them are also in the Crimes of Grindelwald movie magic book. Next up are a few activity books. There are many more of these out there, but the three I picked up were J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World, A Magical Yearbook, Fantastic Beasts, A Cinematic Yearbook, and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Fashion Sketchbook. These are all interactive books meant for young fans to write in and have fun rather than being informative reference books, but I wanted to give them a quick mention because on occasion you can find a rare photo of a prop not generally seen in the formal reference books. For example, the fashion sketchbook has an illustration of the seldom seen Makuza Auror's Wand. A magical yearbook has some nice full-size shots of magical New York postcards from the 1920s, front and back. And Fantastic Beasts, a cinematic yearbook, has a photo and slightly altered fillable version of the 1920s Ministry of Magic travel permit application. Next up are some guidebooks for the Warner Brothers Studio Tour and the House of Mina Lima Gallery in London. Starting with the Studio Tour, the official guide is a very high quality souvenir, packed with large illustrations of the sets, props, and exhibits inside the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. I believe there are four editions of this out now, each one in succession expanding another few pages to include new sets and exhibits that have opened. In addition to extra material in each one, they do have slight differences between them with sizes of photos and layouts, so again, depending on your level of interest, you may be interested to get more than one. These do crop up secondhand all the time online, so you don't have to attend the studio tour to get your hands on one of these. The House of Mina Lima gallery guidebook may be slightly harder to come by, though. I did pick this one up at the actual gallery in Soho, London. This is definitely more of a showcase of the gallery itself rather than the artwork, though. It does show off many of the different pieces of Mina Lima's art, but they're all quite small in framed displays, just like how the walls of the gallery appear. Next are some books which were published to accompany exhibitions. First is Harry Potter, A History of Magic, which was published to accompany an exhibition from 2017 to 2018 at the British Library in London. It ties together elements of the Harry Potter universe with the real-life history that inspired the stories, organized into chapters themed around different classes at Hogwarts. 
In this approximately 250 page book, you get to learn about the history of things like potions and alchemy, astronomy, divination, and defense against the dark arts, with a multitude of high quality illustrations of items from the exhibit. It also features a two page essay by Steve Cloves, the writer who adapted the novels for the screen, and an assortment of pages showing drafts, plans, and even illustrations by J.K. Rowling for those who are interested in how the novels were created. Harry Potter A Journey Through a History of Magic covers the same exhibition at the British Library, but is essentially a children's version of the previous book. With 144 pages, it is still packed with information and illustrations covering the exhibit, but it is simply designed and written for a younger audience. From 2020 to the very beginning of 2022, there is an exhibition at the Natural History Museum in South Kensington, London, on Fantastic Beasts, The Wonder of Nature. This exhibit connected the magical creatures from the Wizarding World to various real-life animals throughout history that may have served as inspiration. Some of these, of course, weren't invented by J.K. Rowling and have been part of cultural mythologies throughout the ages. The exhibition also featured props and costumes from the first two Fantastic Beasts films, so the book contains some beautiful photos of these. The exhibition also looked at real-life explorers and surveyors of natural history, much like the fictional Newt Scamander, and looks at some of the tools of the trade. Like A History of Magic, this is aimed at adults of a more academic inclination, but it is a very lovely book. Finally, I wanted to quickly mention a hard-to-find book which accompanied a brief exhibition on the art of Mina Lima in 2015, long before they opened their own galleries, and before many of the other books containing their designs were published. I do not own this, and possibly never will, unless I get really lucky stumbling upon one. It is a very nice book, with pages full of nothing but Mina Lima's art, but from what I can tell, it is very similar to the Guide to the Graphic Arts Department book in the Page to Screen Limited Edition collection, but the main benefit is the illustrations are larger, more in line with the prints they sell. And now for the main attraction. In this parcel is the brand spanking new Magic of Mina Lima book, which has just been released this October 2022. I had pre-ordered a signed copy from Mina Lima's website months ago. Link in the description if you'd like to order one too. But I have saved it until now so we can unbox it together. This is my first unboxing. Very nicely packaged. Da da da. Ooh. There's a little ad included for the newest fairy tale book, Snow White and the Other Grimm's Fairy Tales, which I will also be getting. Oh, pretty. Oh, it's gorgeous. All the little gold details on the cover are actually slightly raised, so oh, it's really nice. All right, shall we open it? Mm. Ah, there are my signatures. Now you don't have to order through Mina Lima's website to get the book, but if you want a signed copy, you can order signed copies from their website. If you're also in the London area, I think they've announced they're going to do some more signing events for this book over the next couple of months. It all started with a letter. All right, the Disney fan in me is definitely noticing the similarity to it all started with the mouse. Right, I'm having a quick look through myself just to get first impressions. So I expected this to be a little bit like the film wizardry books, which it definitely is as far as design, but that makes sense because Mina Lima did design the film wizardry books. But this is really special. I mean, we've had many books with layouts of, say, the wizarding books and various documents and props that they've created, but this is really gorgeously laid out. And it looks like they're really going into detail about how they created the different props, which is exactly what I was hoping out of this book. Oh, I can't wait to read it. And there are some little fold out interactive elements. I don't see any actual prop replicas, but again, this isn't a film wizardry book. This is a book celebrating the designs of Eduardo Lima and Mirafor Amina. Oh, even a section about the film companion books that they designed, which we've already covered. Also the screenplays of the first two Fantastic Beasts films, which they designed the covers for. I know a lot of people are upset they didn't do Secrets of Dumbledore. Some pages about how they became the Team Mina Lima and their various galleries around the world. Oh my gosh, they have little cutout paper dolls of Mira and Eduardo. That's adorable. There's a nice index at the back explaining all of the different elements on each page. 
Okay, first impressions, this is absolutely worth having for fans of the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts films. It is completely different than all of the other books I've covered because this is really about the graphic team Mina Lima. Covering their history as a team and going into much further detail about how they came to certain designs, how they got involved with Harry Potter in the first place. So now I'm going to go and film a complete flip through of this book, which again you can see in the next video that's about to come out. But just based on my first glances at it, this is definitely going to be one that is worthy of every Potter collector's shelf. My entire hallway upstairs is dedicated to Mina Limo, and I was lucky enough to meet them at their London gallery last year? But that's it, that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful and informative. Thank you so, so much to my current 2,781 subscribers. And until next time, be kind, be curious, and be effective. Bye. <laughs> oh.